The Ides of March. I come. I <laughs> see not gone. Hail Caesar! Oh, I this schedule. Show me yourself as I to agree that you best leave your business from the suit. Oh, Caesar, read my first reminds us of the touch of Caesar. Here. That read the great Caesar. That was for us ourselves in the last serve. Delay not great Caesar. Read the instant. What is it going back? Caesar, you play. Caesar, read the note. Caesar! Ah! I wish today your enterprise was mine. What enterprise could it be?
intended to your person, nor to no person else. So tell them, Cicero. And leave off, Cicero, lest the people rushing on us should do your age some mischief. Do so, and let no man abide this deed but we the doers. Where's Antony? My two sons of these men, wives, and children stare cry out and run as if we're doomsday. Face me with know your pleasures. If we must die, we know. Tis but the time in drawing days out that men stand upon. Why, he that cuts off twenty years of life, cuts off so many in fear and death. Ah, uh, so are we Caesar's friends that have cut off his time of fear and death. Stoop. Stoop, humble Romans, and let us bathe our hands up to our elbows in Caesar's blood and besmear our swords. Then walk we forth even to the marketplace, and waving our red swords o'er our heads, let's cry peace, freedom, and liberty. Stoop! Then and wash. How many ages hence shall this, our lofty city, be acted over in states unborn and absent, yet unknown? How many times shall Caesar bleed in sport that now on Pompey's basis lies along no worthier than the dust? So oft as that shall be, so often shall the knot of us. Be called the men that gave their country liberty. What shall we for? God, every man away. Brutus shall lead him, we will grace his heels with the most boldest and best heart to prove. Heart to blow there, a friend of Anthony's. Thus, Brutus, to my master, bid me kneel. Thus did Mark Antony bid me fall down, and being prostrate, thus he bade me say. Brutus is noble, wise, valiant, and honest. Caesar was mighty, bold, royal, and loving. Say, I love Brutus, and I honor him. Say, I feared Caesar, loved him, and honored him. If Brutus will vouchsafe that Antony may safely come to him, and be resolved how Caesar hath deserved to lie in death, Mark Antony shall not love Caesar dead, so well as Brutus living. But will follow the fortunes and affairs of noble Brutus through the hazards of this untrod state with all true faith. So says my master Antony. He is a wise and valiant Roman. I never thought him worse. So tell him, if it please him, come unto this place. He shall be satisfied, and by my honor, depart my touch. I know that we shall have a welcome friend. I wish we may. Yet I have a mind that fears him much, and my misgiving still holds truly to the purpose. Mark is arrived. Welcome, Mark Antony. Oh, mighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? Are all thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils shrunk? to this little measure. Fare thee well. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be like blood? Who else is rank? And by myself there is no hour so fit as Caesar's death hour, nor no instrument of half that worth, as those your swords, made rich with the most noble blood of all this world. I do beseech ye, if you bear me hard now, with your purpled hands to reek and smoke, fulfill your pleasure. Though a thousand years I shall not find myself so apt to die, no place will please me so, no means of death as here by Caesar. And by you cut off the choice and master spirits of this age. O oh, Antony, thank not your death of us, 